Hello everybody. So let us study an interesting formulation a pharmaceutical suspension. In this video, we shall discuss what is a biphasic system, what is a suspension, what are its advantages and disadvantages, what are the classification of suspension, and what is a flocculated and a deflocculated suspension. So let us begin. So in order to understand suspensions and later emulsions, let us first understand what is a biphasic system. So as the name suggests, a biphasic system is composed of two phases, continuous phase, also called as external phase, and dispersed phase, also known as internal phase. Now the continuous phase is further composed of either a liquid or a semi-solid. Whereas the dispersed phase or the internal phase can be an insoluble liquid or an insoluble particulate. So in an emulsion, we have insoluble liquid dispersed in a liquid. We shall study more about emulsions in another video. Whereas a suspension has insoluble solid particles dispersed in a continuous liquid medium. Now remember, that all the biphasic systems are heterogeneous in nature. So let us put this together in a definition format. A pharmaceutical suspension is a heterogeneous system consisting of two phases in which the internal phase is dispersed uniformly throughout the external phase. Now an internal phase consists of a solid particulate matter that is usually insoluble in the dispersion medium. However, it is dispersed uniformly throughout the external phase. Now, this is by the help of certain excipients and the important one is a suspending agent. Now, external phase is also known as suspending medium or dispersion medium. It is generally aqueous but if you are using it for non-oral purposes like topical or ophthalmic, it can also be oily in nature. Now remember that the dispersed drug in a suspension is in the particulate form and not molecular. Now let us discuss the advantages of formulating a suspension. So since the drug is in its particulate form and not in its molecular form, suspensions can be formulated for drug having a low solubility. They can also improve chemical stability of certain drugs, for example, procaine penicillin G. Now we know that it is difficult for pediatric and geriatric patients to swallow tablets or capsules. Hence, suspensions can be used to deliver drugs in such cases. Now, suspensions exhibit a higher dissolution rate and thereby a higher bioavailability than other dosage forms. Now, this is because tablets and uh, other coated tablets and capsules needs to disintegrate and then the granules will dissolve but drug is already present as a suspended particle. Hence, it is a faster process. So this is the order. Solution is the most fastest, then comes suspension and then the other formulations. Now we can also control duration and onset of action of a suspended formulation. Now because of that, it is possible for a pharmaceutical suspension to be formulated as a controlled delivery system. For example, intramuscular injection. And suspensions can mask unpleasant or bitter taste of certain drugs. For example, chloramphenicol. Please do remember these examples. For any formulation, a given set of advantages also have certain disadvantages. So let us discuss the disadvantages of a pharmaceutical suspension. We see there are many instabilities in our suspension. Instabilities like physical stabilities, sedimentation problems, compaction problems, 
Also, crystal formation like Oswald ripening and breaking of the suspension. These are certain instabilities which need to be addressed and they are very difficult to be corrected. Also, pharmaceutical suspension comes in a bottle made of glass or plastic. Hence, it becomes a bulky dosage form and care must be taken while handling and transport. So, there is less patient compliance. Also, it is difficult to formulate and produce an aesthetic appearance of a pharmaceutical suspension keeping in mind these instability issues. Also, before you use or consume a suspension, it must be shaking, okay? Uh, so that again leads to patient in compliance. And if it is not shaking before use, uniform and accurate dose cannot be achieved, okay? And if you want to achieve a uniform and an accurate dose, you need to have a unit dosage form for suspension, which is not possible. Also, pourability and syringeability are certain issues which need to be addressed. Syringeability is highly important for formulating a parent role suspension. Now, let us understand different classifications of a pharmaceutical suspension. The first classification is based on the route of administration. Next, we also have classification based on what is the content or proportion of the dispersed phase or what is the electrokinetic nature of the solid that is a dispersed phase and also classified based on the size of the dispersed phase. So, let us understand them one by one. In the route of administrations, we have oral suspensions, we have topical suspensions and we have parenteral suspensions. So, in oral, we have Further two types, that is either reconstituted suspensions or ready-to-use suspensions. The ready-to-use suspensions are the ones which are already biphasic liquid systems coming in bottle. And the reconstituted one can either come in bottle as a powder or in sachets. So you can pour open those sachets and mix the liquid in the directions as per given on the label and then form your reconstituted suspension. Now, along with the ones which we apply on the skin, topical suspensions also include ophthalmic ones. Now, the proportion of dispersed phase can be either dilute suspension or concentrated suspension. So, this can be either 2 to 10 percent weight by volume and concentrated suspension usually has the solid content up to 50 percent weight by volume. Now, the electrokinetic nature of the dispersed phase can either make the suspension flocculated or deflocculated. And now, the size of the dispersed phase can be either colloidal, that is as we studied in colloids, less than 1 micron, or coarse, which is greater than 1 micron. Now, if these are in nano range, it becomes a nano suspension. If it is in a micro range, it becomes a micro suspension. So, that liberty is given to the formulator. So, as we studied in the video of course dispersions, we understood that the pharmaceutical suspensions are composed of coarse solid particles and thus they tend to sediment because of their size. Now, a suspension which sediment in which the particles sediment to form a hard cake like this is called a deflocculated suspension. So, what happens in this is that the particles have certain electrical repulsive forces between them and because of that they do not form flocks they instead form close packed arrangement at the bottom of the container also the voids present in between these particles are filled by smaller particles right so it forms one hard mass now the lowermost particles are a uh, sediment and uh, they are gradually pressed by the upper particles because of their weight okay and thus the repulsive barrier is overcome okay hence they form a closely tight bond or closely tight mass now there is physical bonding taking place which leads to formation of this what is called as a cake or a clay now this is due to the formation of bridges between the particles 
resulting from a crystal growth and hydration effect. So simple agitation post like the shaking of your suspension bottle won't redisperse this cake. Okay, forces greater than that are required. Now, as you see, the supernatant here is not clear. It is still turbid. It still remains cloudy because of the presence of certain colloidal range of particles that are still in the dispersed phase. Okay, so this was all about deflocculated suspension. Now let us understand what are flocculated suspensions. In this kind of system, settling of the suspended particles leads to flocculation. These are known as flocks or flocculate. Flocks are loosely bonded structures, right? As you can see, sedimentation of these flocculated particles is rapid than that of deflocculated particles. Now here, as we observe, the sediment is loosely packed and it has a higher volume. You can see it is more bulky. Now that is because these flocks retain their structure. And because of this, it is easily redispersible, right? On shaking of the suspension, this suspension will again redisperse all its suspended particles. Hence, this is des desirable. Now, as we see here, the supernatant is clear because the colloidal particles, okay, those range of particles which were initially dispersed in the dispersion medium are trapped within these flocks, all right? And hence, they sediment along with them. Thus, the supernatant remains clear, unlike deflocculated suspension. So now you all are very well introduced to suspension. We shall look more into the formulation aspects in the next video. Happy learning.